Oh, hello, Tiffany here. Welcome to my quilting life. Today is Sunday, so Sunday, where I inspire you to sew on a Sunday or any day of the week, like I say it every time. <laughs> Anyways, today is the day after Christmas. You did not see me for Christmas or Christmas Eve. You saw the day before that. Um, I've had family in town. I've been really busy. I haven't even been playing on YouTube except for last night. I was on teas because that's because everybody was in calm down mode. So I was allowed to sneak a sewing channel in. <laughs> but I've been really busy with family and cooking and friends stopping by. Literally everything it was last minute today. So <laughs> um, even my decision for what I will make today while we're here. So I didn't set up any specialty cameras or anything like that today because, well, I have just so much to do and so much going on. So you guys are watching me from my phone again. So let's see who's here, Mr. Scotty. Hello and Merry Christmas, everyone. All right. Well, Happy Merry Merry Christmas yesterday, everybody. And Merry Christmas to those I never said it to. And almost the new year. Not very long to go. All right. We got Diane here. Kim is here. Carissa. Julia, uh, Vicky is here, Elizabeth is here, Brenda is here, Wanda, uh, Brenda, uh, da, 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 people are saying hi. We got Janice here, Joe is here, Emily is here, um, Janice, Kathy B, um, Kath. Melissa, Judy, another Judy, Tammy, Darlene, Paula, B, uh, Gwendolyn, Shelly, Jacqueline, Brenda, oops, another Shelly, MJ is here, Doris is here, Nancy is here, Melissa, Claudia, Patricia, Nancy, Paula, Ellen, Kathleen, Elaine, and Glennie. Look at all you guys. Welcome and thank you for joining. I know it's the day after Christmas. Some people still have families in their homes and I 100% completely understand. So I'm just glad you guys can all join those of you that are here. So for today, it's just an improv project. We are, I am, and you guys could follow along or watch it as a replay and follow along on that. I am just improv making a stars table runner. So I had, um, you guys know that I did an unboxing recently. One turned out to be a serger, even though it was, both of them were told to me to be fabric boxes. <laughs> and the other was filled with fabric. So I pulled some five inch squares from there that are fabric. And they're five inch squares. They're all in browns and greens and creams. And then also in browns, creams, um, rust orange, that kind of just goes with the flow of the brown and green were some jelly roll scraps and pieces. And then to go with it, you guys know I allot myself a certain, a certain amount of yardage to go with said projects. So I figure this will end up being, you know, quite the size of a project. So I grabbed myself one yard of fabric and the fabric I'm using is Age to Perfection by Maywood Studio, which I use often because I had a whole bolt of it, but it's getting low. I'm telling you guys, I'm starting to get low on my specialty fabrics. <laughs> the ones that I really like as my background fabrics lately. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make stars. But before I get to that, I am going to toss this stuff out of the way and cut some background fabric so that I can get straight to making stars. I will tell you guys all 100% in advance. My mom and my stepdad are still here. They're out um, doing something on the computer, trying to figure something out. Um, you were not sewing with my mom today. So don't even ask. <laughs> She's not in the mood Maybe right now, hi, but she might come in and say hi. Um, but they're busy right now out in the other room. But I just thought I would let you know if any point during my live stream, I need to go say bye to my mom and my stepdad, 
uh, I may leave the screen for a few minutes and maybe leave Scott here to just entertain you or something or just let the screen sit. Right, but I don't know if they're going to be leaving directly while I'm live streaming or not. So just letting you know, if I walk away from the camera for like five minutes, that's just because they decided to get ready and go. So, <laughs> all right. So let's cut some fabric. I'm going to start by cutting some four and a half inch strips and then i'm also going to cut some um two and a half inch strips because i need four and a half and two and a half so what i'm going to do is straighten an edge up i need a left-handed ruler or ruler cutter for that and i know you guys can't see fully in my screen so i'm trying to make it where you can um would help if the ruler was the correct direction. I'm going to start by cutting some. I really don't need to cut too much because I did cut this pretty straight to start with when I cut it off the, the bolt. Um, I am not a very good left-handed sit cutter. Plus, my mat is has not been replaced yet. I have to admit, I've been super lazy about replacing it. <laughs> All right, let's switch to a cutter that actually works better on the mat. All right, so I'm going to cut a four and a half. I'm going to cut two four and a half inch strips to start, I think. That'll give me enough squares to play with to start. So there's one. And there's two. And then I'm also going to cut, um, I'm going to cut four two and a half inch strips to start. Because these are going to be, we're making just basic stars. A sawtooth star, I guess, is what it would be considered. One. Oops, don't move. Two. Three. And... four. Notice today is like no games. I'm just like starting right away. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, I got four of those. And then what I'm going to do is sub cut my, oops, got to stay this way so I don't elbow that a bazillion times. I'm going to sub cut my four and a half inch strips into four and a half inch squares because these will be for the center. So the whole center of my stars are going to be white and my star points are also going to be this age to perfection, which is, it's like a cream. It's not white, really. It reads white to you guys or cream, but it's actually uh, like a cream with a brownish. It looks old. That's what it looks like. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cut them four and a half inch squares out of this. Cut that salvage off first switch to the rotary cutter. Now you guys know I should have just got a left and a right hand rotary cutter. <laughs> Make this so much easier. Um, two. Cut. This is going to be a big table runner. I could split it up and make multiple table runners though. Three. And I need to make a nice straight line again. For some reason, I got crooked, but that's because I'm sitting down. And when I'm sitting down, everything gets wonky. Not my fault. Four, and then I'm going to open these up and get one more cut. And Scott, if you're going to iron today, you should turn it on because I'm oh, going to. Oh, you wanted me to. Of course, yeah. Of course I'm going to iron. I'm trying to cut it with the fold of the fabric, so it's going to be in this square. All right, move that out of the way. So my centers are done. Now I need to cut some two and a half inch squares. These will be the uh, squares that I'm using to put on the, to make the flying geese part of the stars. And I can't speak very well, but that's okay. Line it up. 
I don't know how many pieces I ever need to start, but I do know I need four two and a half inch, one, two, eight two and a half inch squares per star. Because I'm just going to do a stitch and flip method. What size is that cutting mat? My cutting mat is a uh, 2436, and I'm going to be sending in the information to Fiskars to claim this one because it's replacement for life if there's problems with it and this one got scratched up and gouged so easy but you know what I'm gonna claim it and get a new one all right two and a half inch squares is what I'm subcutting and I'm using a lot I'm using the 60 because I'm going through quite a bit of layers guys I just got to remember to turn these right side down because they're flipped right now. And this fabric is hard to tell right side from wrong side. So if it does end up on the wrong side, I don't think it's going to matter too much. But I'm going to try my best to keep everything accurate. So I'm just sub cutting two and a half inch squares. And like I said, I need eight per. And each one of these stacks is eight. For now, you know, each section because I'm cutting eight layers at a time. Eight pieces of fabric, if that makes any sense. Eight layers, same thing. Even when the fabric is in half, it's still considered, each two pieces is considered a layer. Does that make sense? It should make sense. I hope everybody had a wonderful Christmas. Time with families, good food. Nice gifts. All right, there's enough stars for now. There's enough centers. Now I need to take, I'm gonna like mix and match this stuff. And I could do some of my stars the opposite way where these pieces or whatever, but um, I'll start with these guys just in case I don't need those. I'm just gonna cut a couple of these into two and a half by four and a half inch pieces. So I'm just gonna like stack a couple up, cut them into two and a half inch strips and then subcut to the four and a half. And they're not all exactly five inches I'm noticing. So I'm just gonna line them up as best as possible. But you know how some companies cut their pieces differently. This is one of those companies. You ready for me to iron? Oh, can you make these two flat real quick? Yeah. All course. right, that's enough layers at once. And I'm going to mix and match too. I'm not putting all the same color all the way around because I don't have two of everything. So I'm just going to do this right here. Split it directly in half. Ooh, look at that. The other side's two and a half. And then we're just going to cut a half inch off of one or the other end. I'm going to cut it off at this end because that was the shorter end, I think. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut half an inch off of both these ends. And then move that to the side. I'm going to cut up a few more because I'm mix matching. That's fine. Two, three. And four and five. So again, I'm going to cut them in half and then I'm going to cut a half an inch off of one or the other end. These ones weren't funky in too many different sizes, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off of this. Stick those there and stick those there like that. Let's start with these. So what I'm going to do is that's going to be the center. I'm going to choose four of these, two, three, and four. I'm going to take all eight of these guys. So I have eight in the one whole stack like this. And all eight of these are going to go on each side on the diagonal of all of this. So two for each one of these. Anita wants to know if your instructions are someplace in your 
with. No, these are just all verbal instructions. Very easy, vi verbal visual instructions. Very simple to do. Um, and then I'm going to take another one of these because the outer pieces, the four corners, are going to be a different color. So I'm going to just take one of these two and a half inch strips and I'm just going to um, subcut these into two and a half inch squares. Also, let me just take these shorter ones. I had some shorter ones. Hey, Scotty, can you press these real quick? Make all this straight, please. Of course. That's Me and Squeak, one. we get done. That's mostly the wrong one. Uh, while he's pressing these, we'll get these star points put on. I'll have I'll him press all these for my corners. Okay. So I'm going to start by attaching all of my corners on. So here's my four and a half inch square. I'm going to take my two and a half inch square. I'm going to put it right sides together like this on one or the other side. It doesn't matter what side you start on. And I'm going to sew from the middle to the corner. So from the middle to the corner, a diagonal line. Just over there is fine for now, as long as I can reach them. So from the middle down to the corner. And I'm using seam tape. Oops, and I should have a better stitch length, which would be nice. Um, let's reverse that, I guess. From corner to corner like that. And I'm going to go ahead and just chain piece a, the whole lot of every single one of these onto all these for a second. Because he's still pressing my corners anyway. So right sides together, sewing from the center to the bottom corner. We're just stitch and flipping is what we're doing with these for now. Makes it so much easier. It's kind of, I think it's, this is probably one of the easier ways to make flying geese is the stitch and flip method. All right, so I get all these sewn on. So say I have four of these on, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut away a quarter inch from the seam. Where is it at? Where is it at? My little tiny ruler. I covered it or something? Where did I throw it? There it is. Possible. All right. So I'm just going to cut a quarter inch weight. I'm going to save all my little pieces. They're going to go towards my, you know, the little pieces I'm using for my 25 patch prop, 25 patch blocks, prog, prog, secondary quilt for my 25 patch blocks. These pieces are all going with all that. All these little cutoffs because I'm making another project anyway with all the half square triangle piece cutoffs in my whole entire room. So I'm say I save all of these. No particular reason why I do. I mean, I don't have to, you don't have to, I don't have to, nobody has to, but I do. Since he's still ironing, I'm just gonna finger press these back. Kind of makes it easier for me Still at the moment. I'm like halfway done. Just finger pressing them back and we're going to add the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and chain piece a whole ton of them. <laughs> what is he saying? All right, so now I'm going to put another two and a half inch square on the opposite side, again, creating a flying geese unit. And I'm going to sew again from the center down to the bottom corner. So I'm just going the opposite side. I'm just going to sew all these on. Grab another one. Put it right sides together on the opposite side. And we're going to sew from the center to the bottom corner. This will also allow us to have a nice quarter inch um, <sighs> clearance at the top of our flying geese so that we do not lose our flying geese points. And one more. Where are your geese flying to? My geese are flying straight to the star because that's what they're turning into. They're going to the stars. 
All right, so the opposite side now is sewn on, and I'm going to go ahead and trim those away. I am just doing a, a quick and easy sawtooth star project. Well, quick and easy on my side, I guess, for me. Probably isn't for, the, for a lot of you, but for me it is. All right, so I'm going to again cut these excess pieces off, and then I'm going to pass them to Scott to press. Yeah. And we're going to assemble our first star. And I think my mom is probably ready. Are you ready to go or are you coming in to say hi? Uh, hi like a hi and bye? All right, come over here and close to me so they can hear you and see you. And the camera's hi, down. Everyone. It's facing down a little, so you have to come down. Hello. Do you guys remember my mom? This is Beth or Elizabeth or however you want to say it. She goes by Beth. So. Yeah, Beth is good. Beth is good. Yes. And you'll sometimes see her when she's in the chat, if you guys ever recognize. What is your name on YouTube that you use? The Something creative, right? The Creative Jungle. Creative Jungle. So if you guys ever see Creative Jungle lurking in the chat box down below, that is, me. That is her. So. Hello, everyone. But she's getting ready to go now, so let me get the star together real quick, and then we will... Uh, I'm going to take that five-minute break I was telling you guys about and go um, press these real quick. I'm going to take that five-minute break in a few minutes and go say bye to my mom. Can you press these real quick so that they're flat so I can put this first star together real quickly like? All right, I'm going to grab four different colors here from all these that he pressed. So there's one. Two, I'm going to stack them up and we're going to cut them into, these are two and a half inch strips. I'm going to subcut to two and a half inch squares. Oh, that's the same as that one. We don't want two of those. I need four pieces to start. Thank you. And one more. This will work. We're going to cut these at the same time. Just like this. Yep, I told you to use a popular mama. All right, so we're just making this quick one, and then I'm going to do my thing. So here is four different colors. We're going to lay our center four and a half inch square right here. All the way around it, I'm going to put my star points like this, facing in towards the center. So there I have a star, and then my four corners are going to have these guys, which are two and a half by two and a half. Just like this. So we're going to put our sawtooth start together by taking these top two, then these next two, and these next two. And we're going to sew those together real quick with a quarter inch seam. I'm going to leave that on there. Grab the next one. This is called chain piecing for those that don't know. And I'm gonna grab this last two and put them on here, leaving everything still together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and finger press this top one towards the outside square, this next one towards the inside square, and this bottom one towards the outside square. Then I'm gonna go ahead and grab this top piece. We're gonna attach it on here, just like this. We're going to sew it. Everything's still connected. I can't lose the spot of anything. I'm going to grab the next one. And you should have a quarter inch clearance, so you should not lose your points of your stars if you sewed your pieces on correctly. All right. Last one. Then we're going to do the same thing. Finger press out to the right. Finger press in towards the left, finger press out towards the right. Haven't lost the order. Now we're just going to put the bottom one up onto it. Nest the two seams because now they're going in opposite directions. I stop in the first seam, go to the next one, adjust it. So the rest of the way across. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to press it towards the middle with my finger for now. Grab this bottom one, it's still attached, right sides together. Nest my first seam, lay it on the machine, 
So right up to that seam, stop, adjust, grab the next seam. We're just gonna sew the rest of the way across. And then I'm gonna finger press it towards the center. And there we have one sawtooth star to start. So press this so it's really flat real quick. And then I will go say goodbye. Doing my job. Yeah, well, I'm not hooked to the computer, or else I would have it. All right, so there's my nice flat sawtooth star that you guys can stare at right here on the desk. You're not going to hear me. I'm going to go say my goodbyes, so I will be right back. Here you go. Sit and talk, Scotty. <laughs> okay. Bye. Drive safe. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Drive safe. You're always in. Oh, you did a cameo on there? Nope. You're going to click on say hi? You got to dip Here. yourself a little bit. Nope. Did Too bad. Oh, you you, you're you going to get embarrassed, dude. Oh. Yeah, okay. Oh, he wants a hug. Oh, okay. okay. I thought you were going to. Merry Christmas. Dude. Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming. Drive safe. <laughs> I didn't know that. We could have done that on camera. I thought you wanted to. <laughs> Well, get in here again. Do it again. Right, one more right, time. Let's do it one more time. Yep. We're doing it one more time. One more time. All right. There we go. Merry Christmas. Thank you for coming to visit. Thank you. It Merry was, Christmas. It was a good time. We had fun. We played Uno. A lot. <laughs> let's see. Did anyone else play Uno for Christmas? We played Uno. Did everyone else get fabric for Christmas? How about that? I know Tiffany got fabric for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Nobody's telling me anything, so I don't know. Can everyone hear me at least? Hello? Hello? Oh, I got blades and was sick for Christmas. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but hopefully you're getting better. Mexican train dominoes. I don't know what that is, but it sounds fun. Oh, Nadine got fabric for Christmas. No Uno. <laughs> we played a lot of Uno. We had fun. Bunch of grown-ups playing Uno. Yes, it was fun. <laughs> oh, Kathleen got a fat quarter bundle. Oh, a gift certificate for Joanne's. Well, you deserved it, Joe. Dolly Parton perfume and fashion doll. I love it, Emily. I like Dolly Parton. So does Ted. We like her music. No fabric, no games. Sorry, Kathy. Kath didn't get nothing either. Well, I'm sorry. Well, Janice had fun with the grandkids. That's good. That's what it's all about. Having fun with the family. Having fun with the kids. Oh, Amy got a lot of stuff. Blades, needles, quilting gloves, fabric. Joanne's gift card. There you go, Edith. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm, I'm good if you're coming back on. All right, I'm plugging you guys back into some sound from me. All righty, there we have it. You know what I got for Christmas? Jack Skellington. It has a shirt, a matching shirt, but it's not a quilt room shirt. It's like the shag carpet type of shirt. And it definitely picked up all the thread when I was in here giving my mom fabric. I kind of just gave her a ton of fabric and set her free <laughs> earlier. But yeah, while I was in here, I got that thing covered. I don't know how I'm going to even get the, the little pieces of fabric, you know, the shreddings. I don't know how I'm going to get that out of that shirt. But it has a matching shirt. That was one of my Christmas presents. All right. Where was I at? You Just done? That. Yeah. So we're going to make some more of these. And I'm also going to do, since I do have a bunch of these that are not, um, uh, what's the word? I didn't cut up all of my white and I didn't cut up all of these. I'm just cutting a little bit of time. My Some of my stars can be the opposite. Does that make any sense? 
so they don't all have to be with the white in the center but it definitely is very pronounced <laughs> but i'm going to try to make as many as i can so let's get to making some more i have everything i need for stars except for pre-cutting a ton of these pieces so i'm going to go ahead and prep by cutting a bunch more from these fabrics That way I can have a bunch more two and a half inch squares for my corner pieces. Did they? Go look. I totally forgot. It was on the long arm. Okay, good. That would be a total disaster if they didn't. Okay. So I'm stacking these up. I'm just going to cut all of them into two and a half inch squares. These are the ones I already cut. So we're going to stack them up anyway. Straighten the ends and cut some more pieces. And I'll just pilfer through a two and a half inch square pile. And anything that I don't use here can go towards my 25 patch blocks, which is a plus. All right, you guys know I don't prep for anything really, but I did make myself a pile and pulled out all the brands to do this today. Okay, that stack should be tall enough. Make a second stack. I still have to cut the salvages off. Notice I'm not even doing it on my cutting mat in the correct direction. I'm just cutting however it lays out. As long as they're laying straight and not bowed, you should be able to just lay your pieces out and use your rulers as your cutting measurements instead of your mat. For those that didn't know and think that you have to use, you know, your cutting mat also as measurements. So, start chucking all these ends. Okay, those are all right two and a half inch squares so i can have a nice big huge pile of them oh man i hate that my mat's all ruined i'm gonna cut these two Lots of layers to try to cut though just lay it way up here so i can Start with a nice straight line. Oh, get it off of there. We've had so much things going on this weekend. It's been crazy around my house. Scrap bin, get one more off of this. I'm glad I dug more pieces out so that I could use more two and a half inch squares. <laughs> that way I didn't have to have all the same pieces from the charm squares. And whatever I don't finish today will probably carry on into next Sunday and hopefully not ever end up in my completely UFO pile because I have quite a bit of those, but I didn't feel like digging any of those out, as you can tell by me not working on any of them. <laughs> but in 2022, I definitely have a resolution to pull all those out and get them done. All right, that's enough of that for now. Let's make another star. So we need another center, a ton. I'm going to go ahead and just separate two, three, and four. Those are four different colors. We're going to do that again. One, two, three, and 
four. And we're going to do that again. One, two, three, and four. We're going to do it again. One, two, three, and four. And then one, two. We need two more from a different one. Let's choose a color I haven't used yet. And we'll make as many blocks as I just now have stacked up. So we need two and a half. Come on. By four and a half. Right there. So there's two of these, which I'm going to have to move a couple around real quick. So that one now there. While you're working on cutting the one, squares, what size is two, you cut? Three, four. What sizes do I cut for what? Squares. What sizes? While you're cutting okay. the squares, what sizes? These outer pieces are two and a half by four and a half, the outer colored ones. The centers are four and a half by four and a half, and then the outer squares that are going to go in these corners are two and a half by two and a half, and then the flying geese pieces are two and a half inch um, pieces. So we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see how many I have here. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to pull two from here and we're going to build five blocks all at once. So I'm just going to grab all of these now. I guess I could just lay them out again. No big deal. And I'm going to attach all these together. We're just going to chain sew all of these on here. So I'm going to start by putting one of my background, which is my center color of my star. We're going to make the flying geese units. Going to go ahead and chain piece the whole thing. That's the right side of that fabric. So I'm sewing from the center out. Center out. Let's go sew all of these. And then we'll cut away the excess and sew the other side. Hoping everybody's having a good day today. Not much cleanup after yesterday for those of you that had family and friends over. Huh? She says she suggests I cut mine into squares because I have a lot of fabric. She suggests I cut mine into squares. Well, no, you don't have to cut all your fabric into squares. If you're not making this, if it's not this project that you're talking about, then no, I would. If your square, if your pieces are less than um, a fat quarters worth of fabric, cut them down into squares. Um, get as many different sizes as you can and start putting them in bins like I do. If you think you're going to make a lot of scrap projects. If you want to try my 25 patch block series, most of that's all been cut from fat quarters or less. Anything that was smaller than a fat quarter, I cut all that stuff from. That's how I've been making so many um, 25 patch blocks. Says, how can you do that without drawing a line? Oh, I don't have to draw a line. I have seam tape, which looks like this right here, hold it up to the camera so you can see. This is seam tape. You can find it at any of the quilt stores. I have a bunch of affiliate links in the description below. I'm pretty sure one or two of them actually sell this, uh, like um, Connecting Threads and Fat Quarter Shop. I think Sewing Machines Plus might even have it. You just have to look. It's called seam tape. I am lining the center. So I'm just going to use this square as an example. I, on my machine, line this top corner and this bottom corner up with the red line so I don't have to draw on my squares no more. This is a lifesaver, this stuff. I'm telling you guys, it's a lifesaver. And my mom just bought a new sewing machine, so I actually put some on some wax paper and sent some home with her so that she can start doing this too because she bought herself a little bit of everything that I have already. 
So she got herself a seam guide and so on and so forth to keep up with the quarter inch and the seam tape. There's no more drawing on your squares. There's, you know, the only time you really need to draw on them is if it's like a, you need to do something super, super duper duper precision. But I can even sew a quarter inch on each side of an invisible line as well with the seam tape by lining up the corners with the two sides instead. Right now? We can do a giveaway, but I don't have any of the program stuff to run it that way, Becca. She wants to know if you want to, they want to do a game. She doesn't know what the game is. That what? She asked earlier if anybody wanted to play a game, and they asked what the game was. She said she didn't know, but the winner's going to win the gift certificate, and then she asked if you want to help play the game. Like an answer to a question? I can ask a question, and the first person to get all that right could be the winner but the the person is there it has to be more than just scott paying attention to the chat for that one because that one's really hard i don't know what game she wants well when she lets you know then you can let me know do something fun pick a question that scott knows the answer to Hold on a second. Let me tell him something. Off. Becca, can you guys hear me? We can do that, Becca. Just tell me when you want to start it, and we'll start it. Because Scott will have to really pay attention. I don't think there's going to be a zillion on that. How question. many people are on right now? 207. Oh, 207 of you guessing. Scott's going to have to read this. Becca said go. All right. What is the name of all of my children in order of their age? Does anybody know the name of all of my children? They've all been on live streams. All of my children. Oh, Becca even knows that one. <laughs> anybody know? Are you going to give them a hint and tell them how many they are? There's four of them. There's okay. four kids. I have four children. Yeah, Becca doesn't know that answer. <laughs> I have four bratlings. Are they guessing? Two people guessed. One person only got three. That's why I said, are we going to give them a hint? Yeah. Four. Only two people guessed. <laughs> Nobody wants to win a gift card? I know you guys know the names of my kids. Okay, let me choose a different, easier one. Give me a minute. You guys could stop guessing if that's too hard for you. Yes, I'm using this. So now that that question's done, Alexa's the oldest, everyone. Yeah. They all think Damon's the oldest. Nope, Alexa is my oldest, just so that you guys know. Alexa's my oldest. Now you guys want to learn something about me while I'm sewing here. <laughs> well, sorry, Heather, we already gave away the answer, so... I don't think yours counts. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, we said it. They're all typing it in. Yeah. No, uh, let me find something. of something that's, um, God, there's a lot of new subscribers that don't know much. <laughs> Teresa says, name the cat. They all might know that one. That yeah, no, easy. that's too easy. The it's cat one is way videos. too easy. He's been in way too many videos, yeah. 
Give me a minute. Give me a minute. No, Diane, Emily didn't get it. Damon is not the oldest. Alexa's no. the oldest. No. Give me a second to think of another one real quick that you guys would know. Give me a minute. My brain is... What are you making tonight, Joyce? Well, I am making sawtooth stars out of scraps. That's what I'm making. I'll leave it up here so you guys Teresa can see. Says, how old is Tiffany? No, that one, I just have my birthday. Everybody knows that. I just celebrated the 21st birthday, the 21st anniversary of my 20th birthday. So everybody knows that. Um, let me think of one. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Um, oh, this is hard to think while I'm cutting. Scotty, you have any ideas? How about this? I got a good one. And Becca, you're on here, so you can pay attention to this. If Becca's subscribers can get over to 11,000, then I'll just do a number draw instead. Get Becca right now over to 11,000. No, yes. I am giving away a gift card. I'm just going to do it by number. No questions asked. And that makes it easier. And they can get her over 1,000 right now. I mean, not 1,000, 11,000. You know what I was saying. Make sure you subscribe to so Becca, and then we'll just do a number. And I'll oh, give. Oh, she already hit eleven thousand. Okay, well then let's hit like eleven thousand two hundred. Nobody knows that. I don't even know that. We're just gonna do the number thing. It makes it easier because I don't have a computer program going. One through how many people are watching? 220? 220. So the number is going to go between 1 and 220. Don't go yet. Uh, yeah, she hasn't told me a number yet, so don't write, Don't start going. Okay. Do you really get to say something normal? Nope. Okay. All right. A number between 1 and 200, or 1 and 220. A number between 1 and 220. You get it right, and you win. Go. Scott's paying attention. It's going to take him a while, so hopefully it goes good. <laughs> I wish I could pay attention at the same time, but I kind of can't. He's trying here, guys. I could have just told Becca in advance, too, <laughs> so she could be watching also. There's no way to secretly signal to her because I'm using my device. <laughs> okay, Jill got it. Jill got it. Jill Rush. Jill one, three, seven. Rush one got the number one hundred and thirty seven. Woot woot! Congratulations, you guys could stop entering numbers. Becca, write it down. Uh, what is it? Jill, who? I'm gonna write it down for her. Stop entering numbers. Stop. Yep, you guys could stop entering numbers now. J I L L. How you spell the last name? I gotta go back up. R U S C H E. U S C H E. So yeah, gift card. All right, you guys can stop entering numbers. Jill Rush has in, has won with the number one thirty seven. Jill Rush won with the number one thirty seven. You guys could stop entering. It should slow down now because it's probably just catching up. It'll take a second, Scotty. And it'll Rebecca stop. Entered, and so did Jill had said stuff since then. So it's not that. They uh -huh. both said stuff. And yep. Still yep. It'll stop in a second. Some people's computers are behind and don't know that they can speed up the live stream. All right. I sewed all of one side on. Okay. It stopped now. So congratulations to Jill uh, R U S C H E, Rushy. A rush, maybe? Uh, rush. It's, rush. it's probably just rush. Um, Becca, do you want me to have them 
her contact you. I already did it. She okay. Already it All right. Thank you. Email her at Becca. Becca at sobecca.com. Put it on here like Good. Good, 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 good. Thank you, Becca. That was very sweet of you to do. Merry Christmas, Joe, because now you get to go spend some money on so yeah, that come. <laughs> Sorry, Jill Thompson. Jill says, my heart skipped a beat. Uh. She said, Jill, we have more than one Jill. Yeah. Sorry, Jill Thompson. <laughs> <gasps> yep. All right. Just got to even get the iron to do its thing real quick. Look, tell Carol, thank you, but it's Becca that's doing the giveaway. Thank you, Carol, but it's Becca from So Becca that's doing the giveaway. And if you guys haven't gone over there already, please go over there to her channel and hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you guys a thing. And she really appreciates it. And she does Friday night lives at 8 p. Is it 8 p.m. Eastern time, Becca, right now? Or is it 9 p.m. Eastern time? I don't know. It's one of those numbers. It says it on her channel if you go over there and subscribe. <laughs> Every Friday night, she goes on live, and there's always something going on. There's either a live chat with friends, or there is a live sewing chat, or something happens. Like this coming weekend, this when is um, uh, New Year's Eve? Friday. Yeah, this coming Friday, she will be hosting a live on her channel with some content creators. You guys may want to go over there and check that out. I will be there for one. So if you guys want to hang out, you might want to check it out. If you have nothing else better to do but hang out and sew and quilt, then that's where we will be on Friday night. Again, thank you, Becca. Very much appreciated. People love to win things right after Christmas. <laughs> it's like, oh, I didn't get what I want for Christmas. Now I'm going to go shopping for it. There you go. <laughs> and now Jill Rush has the money to do so. <laughs> All right. Can you make those flat so that I can attach yes. the other side? Again, for those joining, I am making a sawtooth star tonight. Um, while he's pressing those, those are going to go on over here. I am going to do the opposite by attaching these. So I need. I don't know what a sawtooth star is, but it sounds cool. I need one. I need 20, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 for what I'm doing this moment. Put a couple of these in here too. Seems like I have so many of those repeated. Oh, I didn't get any of that color either. What? Chat. One. Anyways, we're gonna make some opposite ones too, where they're these in the center. These are gonna be for the four corners. I need five of these. Two, three, four, and five. So we're putting together five blocks real quickly, like, and that'll give me a total of six so far. That's fine. I'm going to start sewing on the opposite side. All right, so now I'm going to sew the other side onto these. Are these all two and a half inch squares, Joanne? Yes. These outer four corners are two and a half inch squares. Okay, here, we're going to hold this up again. Two and a half by two and a half, all four corners. This piece right here that the flying geese unit is made from, this is two and a half by four and a half with two and a half by two and a half inch squares snowballed onto it or corner cut or sew and flip, flip and sew, whatever you guys want to call it. And then the center square is four and a half by four and a half. That is the sizes of all of the cuts. This is probably one of the easiest, but 
dramatic stars that you can make because you can change the center to be anything you want. It doesn't have to be a full on star like this. You could put a pieced block here as long, you know, your star legs can be all different colors. You could have like purples running down your star legs all this way or greens running all your star legs in this direction. You could do, I mean, the sky's the limit. The sawtooth star is very versatile block. Um, you know, you can make however you want to make it. I just went the easy route because it, I'm, my goal is table runners. One, two, I don't know how many I'm going to get out of this, but that's my goal is table runners. I'm on a table runner kick lately. And that'll probably dissipate soon enough, but right now I'm on this weird table runner kick. <laughs> Especially when they're on live streams because I can make one whole table runner in one whole live stream video. It's the bigger stuff that I oh not always can make in one video. But they're very easy to make. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? There it is. <laughs> Eric says, I've got table runners galore. I just need a table. Yeah. I have a ton of table runners, too. I have some that you guys have never seen. And that's because I did the table runner version of the big quilt that I wanted to make. And, well, I haven't got to that part yet. Because <laughs> sometimes I make it, sometimes I make one single block, but then that one single block does not tell me what I want, you know, from it. I'm like, well, how's that going to work out? So then I have to make a whole entire something. So I either make a table runner or a baby quilt. And then sometimes you guys never see those things because, well, I'm not ready to make the big quilt yet, so I keep the small project aside, and someday I'll get to the things I've come up with. <laughs> I have one of my thing patterns. It's all cut out. I just need to put it together. It's hard to, it's not like I... You know, you guys know I'm a home, uh, ha at home body kind of person. I don't go places. So I do have all day to sit and sew if I wanted to, but I kind of can't. It, it hurts to sit for too long. It hurts to, you know, my neck problem lately. It's just too much. So, and I don't want to overwhelm myself, you know, so I don't make videos all the time every day. And right now I'm working on a big project, so. That's been taking up a lot of my time the last two weeks. And the fact that I can barely talk right because words and words, phrases, and certain understanding things is kind of hard because I'm having an MS mind problem lately. What do you mean? What do you mean, Herjuki said it's faster than mine? Oh. Oh. Ah, no, that did not just happen. Oh, okay, good. Oops, didn't mean to yell. <laughs> the dang thing picked up this piece, because you know how sometimes that happens. It picked up the piece behind it and started pulling it under the, the needle. <laughs> it's rare that it happens, but it happens. Okay. I'm going to come back over here again. I don't want that in my way because I have to snip the back sides of these off. So now I'm going to trim the extra quarter inch off of these and then that's send it to <coughs> what was I saying? I just was saying something. <laughs> <laughs> 
<clears throat> oh, so give them to Scott so that he can press them. <clears throat> oh, you ready? I will be in a few minutes. Yeah, they're just getting pressed back like that. I'm not going to finger them all. What about this? Yeah. Yeah, I already did some of these. So you went out to take a bitey photo. Um, okay. This one did not stitch in a certain spot. I wonder if that was a starter. Sometimes that happens too. The machine just doesn't stitch. Sometimes it's weird too when it doesn't. Already? Yeah. This is my good, good to go file? Yes. Because there's my done file. My whole one. Oh, we have to move it. These aren't? Not yet. These I are already to... sewn? No, these I have to cut the backside off. Oh. And again, I'm saving my little cutoffs because I'm going to be making stuff more um, little hourglasses to go with my leftovers from my 25 patch blocks. I'm making a secondary quilt, but I'm not just using the 25 patch block extras. I'm actually using all of the pieces that are cut off from anything like making binding, doing blocks like this where it's a stitch and flip or, you know, snowballed corners or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm using all the cutoffs in my whole room that I can find towards that project because I knew it wasn't going to be too big, which is from the 25 patch blocks. So. Back to one for you to remind her later to tell you about how she over oiled her piece. Oh, no. Remind Sorry, Becca. Right. I will Sorry. remind you. We will talk. And Kim wants everyone to know that she made your enchiladas for supper on Christmas Eve, and they were absolute pits. Yes. Yep. Yep, she had to call me to tell me, and for not her just to tell me, but for her children to call and tell me that my enchilada recipe is amazing, and her grandchildren had to say it too. Yeah. Yep, that's what we had. I had two enchiladas yesterday and one today so far. Only because I've had a stomach ache. This is another one that did not sew. What the heck? Maybe it's time I clean my machine. So weird. All right. Now, move all that out of the way. And we're going to lay out all five of these. I'm just going to stack them nicely right here in front of me, just like this. And I'm going to distribute all of these like this. That way all four are different for this whole thing. Kim says she sent an entire pan home with the kids. That's awesome. Yeah, I made 25 total. <laughs> We gave some to everybody that was here, ate them, and then I sent some home with my son, and then I, we took two over to the neighbors, um, and then Your friend's getting my two. friend is getting some. She has to come pick them up, and then that's it so far. <laughs> yeah, I forgot already. There's still some of these from Scott, so that can... No, I didn't fully clean my machine. I just kind of, you know, gave it a once over, I guess is the word for it. But I didn't take it apart and clean it, no. Well, I'm sorry, here. You got four more done. How many do you need? How behind I'm stacking I? all of them. I only have five of them. Two, three, four. Reach 
reach over and just grab one. Be careful, you don't burn your finger that way. Two, I'm not even looking at what I'm ironing. Three. I'm totally looking at it. Oh, so that one's already on. in there. We don't want that one. Get this guy. Four. No. Get this four. Oh, she got ten. That guy three there. And a nine by thirteen and ten. Boy, we only got between four and six in our pan. Yeah, I didn't make the big, huge pans this time. One, two, three, and one more. I'll get it, I'll get it. And four. All right, so there's all those. Now I'm going to stack these around it, where all four will be different. We're going to go one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Am I missing one? Or did I put an extra one in another pile? You might have one, put an extra one in a different pile. Two, Do you want me to help you count? Oops. One, two, three. Or five. Oh, I did put an extra one in the pile. There's five here. And there should be five here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And I had brought over to me. That's what it was. One, two, three, four, five. All right. They're all different. All right. Toss those over there. And we're going to chain piece all five of these together. A little bit closer to me. So I'm going to attach one, two, three, and I'm going to do it again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So they're all together. And this time I'm going to put my darn seam guide over here because I'm really sloppy about that quarter inch seam all without it. I don't know. I don't know what was happening earlier. And then we're going to do it again. So all five of the first row is all sewn off together. That's what I'll do. I think I'll make six total of the opposite colorways. You know, and this was all donated to me, except for the background fabric that I'm using currently. This was all from donations. So you can see directly what I'm doing with stuff that people donate to me. I tend to use it pretty quickly. And this morning I got another Christmas card. I didn't, I don't have any of those in here with me. Any of my Christmas cards that came. No, you don't have to go get them. Well, we won't open them and read it. We can just go. Sorry. You have lovely hands. You got your partner. You care about you. Yeah, they're up there. The one from Riley and Joe and the one from... I forgot yes, who already. Yes, we have to show off. Huh? I put all my Christmas cards out on the shelf, so because we didn't have any Christmas decorations, so I took advantage of the cards as my decorations. So this one Riley made for me, my youngest subscriber. It's out of recycled mail. So adorable. So she made me that card. And then this is the one I got today that says Merry Christmas, and inside it says Happy New Year. Actually, you probably won't even see the red writing, but this one comes from Irma and says, and have a Happy New Year. So this was a cute little one right here. And then the 
the other day I got one. I think I already showed you guys that though. The, um, this one right here. I think so. Yeah, I think I showed you guys this one. Yeah, this one was from Lisa, and I think I showed you guys. It's the the foot. That's the one I got. The stocking. That one is so cool, though. Thank you. It's made from recycled. Yeah, stuff. Riley enjoyed her little that is project so cool. to her Christmas card. She was really excited to make it. All right, now I'm just going to attach the others now. So I'm just going to go in order again. One, two, three, one, two, three, until it's all way done. And then I'll snip them apart in sets of three. So if you guys are new to my channel, um, I tend to do this quite often. I get my quilts made a little bit faster by just constantly, oops, I didn't mean to hit the microphone, constantly, continually chain piecing everything through. Lenny says, I know you posted your recipe for enchiladas someplace and I forgot to write it down. Can you do it again, please? My enchiladas recipe is actually a video. It is from, it? it's here on YouTube from two years ago. It would have been 2019. So just type in, if you go into the search bar on YouTube, type in Tiffany's Quilting Life enchiladas and you'll get it. It should come right up. I sold the Spike Company. Lots of Spike that year. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if only I had an affiliate for that. Because I literally probably sold like, I don't know, 20 things of Spike, I swear. But that's my favorite stuff. I love Spike. must have sewed something wrong or I put too many in one stack again or not enough in the other stack. I don't know what I did again. I guess I'm just having a, a moment. I must be having a moment. I'm telling you guys, my brain is not fully attached in my head right now. Like definitely is not fully attached in my head. Yeah, my next video that's going to be released anytime soon, <laughs> uh, it's being edited with a fully non-intact brain. <laughs> it's funny. All right. So I have this big, huge, long chain. This is all my blocks. It's super simple. You ready to find the blocks? Ready? Snip. Snip. Here's one block right here, just in pieces. I need to sew them together. Right? Again, one, two, three. That's why I keep saying one, two, three, one, two, three. Snip them apart. And guess what? Here is another block ready to be sewn together, just like that. So in sets of three, just stabbed myself by dropping my snips in my lap. Sets of three. And I can continually make all my blocks without getting anything out of order. Just like this. So then now all I have to do is sew these together now. So I'll just open them up, finger press the two and a half inch squares out, the center piece in towards the solid, and then the last bottom two out towards the outside. Just like that. So out, in, out. Or you can press it with an iron. It's not like it's going to do anything bad if you use an iron because your pieces are still hooked together. Just know that you'll, it's a little bit harder when they're still hooked together to iron because 
you can't really adjust much when they're hooked together. You can when you're sewing them. But the iron is kind of big. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to finger press that in. We're going to go put this other side on. And I could do all one side if I wanted right now, instead of one at a time like this, but I'm just doing them one at a time. So I can send them to Scotty to press after they're sewn. All right, finger press in, just like that. So now Scott can press this little guy and make him nice and flat. On to the next. Right sides together. And so. Don loved the bridge video. Awesome. I'm glad you guys got to see that. I know it's kind of shaky and stuff, but uh, again, I have the shakes and have had them. But it's the the video is the day the day before um, Christmas Eve. I went to the bridge here in town. It's called the Lo the London Bridge here in Lake Havasu, Arizona. Um, I I went to see my sis and unbeknownst to me, my kids were there too. <laughs> so Alexa, Damon, and Maxine were there. CJ was at work. He was the only kid that was not involved. And then my friend Justin was there and my sister, my two nieces, and my nephew. And we hung out at the park at first, and then we went over to the London Bridge to see the lights and see Santa. And they had an angel down there, and they had fake snow, <laughs> because we don't have real snow here. <laughs> they had fake snow, and which turned out to be soap, and it was really disgusting. Um, let's see, what else? We just walked around and saw the lights, and I did the little live stream from there. It's only like three minutes long. Um, everyone was getting ready to go. So that's why I just quickly streamed while the lights were pretty. They had the lights this year on the bridge. They changed them out because before in previous years, it only glowed one color, it never changed colors. Now they have a changing color. So it kind of fades from like a white to a red to a green and, or it's solid red or it's solid green, or it's the in between the lighter, darker, medium reds and the lighter, darker, medium uh, greens. So I figured I'd give you guys a tour of the London Bridge, not in London, here in Arizona. It is beautiful. They moved it here in like 63, I think that was the year. I don't know the exact um, year, but they moved it here and it was moved here brick by brick and assembled brick by brick. It's pretty crazy. It was tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of brick. <laughs> it's a pretty big bridge and it goes right over what they dug out is called the channel where boats can go underneath it and then there's an area where you can walk underneath it. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, here's another block. And most of this I'm doing just sitting here finger pressing. Um, if you don't want to finger press, there's lots of tools that you can press with. I just finger press because I'm sitting here. Sooner or later, I'll have to get up and walk around though. I can't sit still for very long lately. Yeah, yeah. This was like the song, "The London Bridge is falling down, falling down." Well, that this is the bridge that was falling down, and we bought sinking. it. It was sinking into the canal where it was. Yeah, supposedly, yep. what they tell us anyway. Yep. And then the guy here, the 
Not creator. Yeah, what is it called? It's not a creator. Cohen. What is he? The owner of the town or the founder? The no, founder no, of McCulloch. Lake Havasu, Mr. McCulloch, bought the purchase the bridge. And it's been a tourist attraction ever since. If you Google the London Bridge, Lake Havasu, you can just Google the London Bridge. Honestly, it's going to tell you that too. Um, and yeah, it'll tell you the whole history. Shoot, it'll even tell you how much he paid for the bridge. It was like something millions, <laughs> something millions. <laughs> he paid a lot for it. And back then, that's a lot of money. A lot of money. All right, one left to do. Not really, I could make lots more, but just for today's video sake. And I think I'm going to make a couple in the, yeah, I'm going to make a couple off screen, probably in the opposite color direction and use up as much of these scraps as possible. And I don't know how many table runners I'll get out of all this. Maybe just one. I, I, was I mean, into the, Thames. the Thames. Oops. Yeah, the Thames River. Oh, no, it's not. Oops. Why did I just say oops? I thought it was an oops. I almost like looked at this and said, I have the block wrong, but I don't. My brain is seeing the wrong thing again. Oh, it says I heard he got the wrong one. I don't know that. If he did or not, just pull up. Yeah. You can type in London Bridge, Arizona. It'll probably show up that way, too. I don't know too much about it. I know they have Napoleon's cannons on it that they turned into lights. Yeah. That's what they say also. It looks pretty cool. I don't know if you got the right bridge or the wrong bridge, or I don't know about that. Okay. I'm the only thing I don't like about this Orifil thread, uh, nothing to dog against certain threads, but this thread seems to come unthreaded all the time. I've changed my needle twice now. It's not the needle, it's just the way this thread is. It does not like Orifil thread comes unthreaded all by its lonesome and then I can't even thread the stupid thing it's thin it's a thin thread at least it's only happened once during this video it's not too bad It probably is me. It just doesn't like me. Oh, really, Judy? Is it pronounced Thames? I did not know that. Thames what? Instead of the river being Thames. Oh. All right. Last one. There we go. And now I have six sawtooth star blocks so far. Move all those out of the way. Move all these over here. Move all those up there. Close some blades so I don't go cutting myself. <laughs> Emily says maybe put your thread upside down. Stephanie's stitches had the same issue and that took you. Do I have to take this thing off when I put it upside down? Because I flipped this twice now. Should I keep this thing off? I mean, is there a difference? I don't know. Put it back this way again, though. It was this way to start with. I flipped it twice and took this little holder thing off twice. But there's a lip on this side, and it's scratching. I don't know if it's going to grab the thread or not. Becca said keep that off and flip it around. Okay, well, it's flipped now. We'll see. All right, here are my six blocks so far. Uh, what size block when all is sewn and done? Oh, uh, the, it's, um, I don't even know where I'm at here. Here we go. I can do it. <sighs> my Steady brain. Knows Steady knows how to One, measure. it's eight and a half. Eight and a half. It's an eight and a half inch block. But Sorry, I should have known that, guys. I totally uh, had a brain fart. All right. Let's lay these little guys out so you can see them. Look, it isn't that adorable. I mean, you can flip them however which way so that it stays 
you know, super scrappy, or you can put sashing in between. Um, again, I only allotted myself a yard of fabric for this project, so I'm not really going to do sashing or anything. I'm going to keep it scrappy. The base thing is just to hold the thread when it's off the machine. Uh, That's all that is for. I don't use it when it's on the machine. I've had it with it on this whole time. That maybe that's weird. <laughs> all right. So there's my six blocks. Can they see all the blocks on the screen? I don't know where some of the stuff is. Oh, oh but the top of the screen. Oh. You hit them in the camera? Oh, you can if you want, yeah. You tell me if you want. Yeah, turn it down just a tid for a second. I think I'm going to do eight. I'm going to do ten. I'm going to do ten blocks like this, and then I'm going to make an opposite version with the other leftovers. So I'll make a table runner with eight of these. So I'll make, um, I mean, 10 of these. So I'll make four more and then make a table runner just with these. And then I'll take my one yard of fabric and cut a quick two and a half inch um, border for it. And that'd be it because I have more of this fabric. So if I go over my yard, I could still do this was just meant for one project. So yeah, that's what I'll do. And then the leftovers, I'll make a second version, but the star will be scrappy and the outside will be the white. Or what you guys see is like a cream color, honestly. Jill said you're meant to change these things since then a game changer. Oh, well, glad to hear. My Laura method. Says it looks like Civil War fabric. It is. I love it. It's um, reproductions. It's definitely reproductions. Yep. Except for the like these other. There's a couple browns in here that aren't. They're just like uh, a leafy fabric. But the most of all this is reproduction prints. I could tell you that because I just got done using a bunch of Kansas trebles to make a big huge quilt out of recently. So I know the style <laughs> quite well. <laughs> Big of a runner are you making, Erica? Um, whatever eight times one, two, three, four, five would be eight. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, so it'll be forty inches long by seventeen, eighteen. It'll be 17, 16 and a half wide plus a two and a half inch border. So that will be nineteen. So it'll be nineteen by forty, something like that. So I could probably just do a one and a half all the way around. Yeah, but you got to take away the half inch seam. When two are combined, it's already lost a half inch. Oh, well, they're laying right here and together. Laying at eight and a half, and they're both lining up at 17 right now. So if they're sewn together, they're going to be 16 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, 16 and a half. yeah so it'll be like 19. So it's be a little more than eight times five. Yeah. It'll be like 19 by 43 or something, or 44 when I'm done. It's not going to be like, it, it'll be big. It's for a big table, but you know. It doesn't even have to be a table runner. It could be a wall hanging. You could hang it on the wall sideways. I mean, Whoever said you had to use a table runner on a table when you could, if you have a back of a door and you want to cover a window, hang the quilt on that. <laughs> you know, some of those back of the door windows are elongated. You know, just hang it on that. There you go. <laughs> um, I have a table runner that I do use in here just to cover the TV, you know, so that the TV is not just right there. So when I'm, the TV is not in use, the table runner hangs on a clothesline right in front of the TV. So it blocks that, and all you see is fabric instead. No TV. <laughs> kind of funny. But anyways, this is what I'm making. Civil War reproductions into sawtooth stars. Super simple, very easy to do. Four and a half inch center block. Two and a half inch by two and a half inch corner blocks. Two and a half by four and a half inch uh, outer um, flying geese blocks. And then the two and a half inch squares that are snowballed onto it or stitch and flipped onto it or whatever you guys want to call it. There's so many different names for this stuff by do so many different companies. Um, I just stitch them on and chop off the back, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I call it. I'm used to saying snowballed, so that's what I say. But that's it. That's what I'm doing. So I'm going to make... says 19 by 40, you might as well do a full quilt. True, I could. 
I can. This could be a baby quilt. I can keep going and just make a baby quilt out of it. Honestly, keep going with this style and make a baby quilt. Maybe that's what I'll do. Because I have all these squares to cut in half still. All these squares are for four corners. I still have some more fabric for that. And I also have more background fabric. And I just have to cut some more two and a half inch strips to have more of these. Because I have two blocks worth right here. So. Uh, email anybody for long arm services contact me by email please and that's it yeah that's easy email 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 and or my business page on facebook there's that too oh you guys like my jack skellington pajamas and don't mind my red covered socks too <laughs> these are so and you know what this is the first pair of pajama pants i have purchased in so long that actually fit me. I don't mean fit me as in waist size, I mean length. These things actually don't drag on the ground. Like I'm short and it's hard to find pants, jeans, regular pants, khaki pants, you name it, pants. No pants, even pajama pants, are ever the length that I need. They always, I'm always walking on them. Ask Scott, because when I walk down the hallway, you can hear the sound of my pants dragging on the floor. <laughs> it's funny. But these, they don't drag on the floor. If anything, they go up like this when my leg is lifted. They literally go right to my ankles where they're supposed to. <laughs> so that's a first. And they're so soft. So soft. So soft. And they're cute. And this is what we watched. We watched The, night, the Nightmare Before Christmas um, on Christmas Eve <laughs> when my mom and my stepdad got here. <laughs> so. All right, guys, maybe I'll just continue making these off camera. Not right now, though, because I need to get up and move around and eat some food. But I'll continue making the rest of these up and see how many I get from it in well, this style. Luann what? Oh, yeah. OK, Luann, just uh, yeah, Scott will have to remind me. I'll do it after, but I all that's from the phone. So. Actually, no. I'll remind myself right now because I forgot that I brought my computer in here with me. I'll give you guys like two more minutes to ask questions if you need to while I open this up because I won't remember. Any other questions? Oh, man. Let's see. For some reason, she can't message me. I forgot about that. I'm glad I could check while I'm here. Like that. Yeah. It should pop right up. No. Aha, okay. I don't know why I never get it, but it's open on my computer now, so all I have to do is um, email you, okay? I'll email you. There we go. Now I can't forget, because as soon as I open it, it's going to go right back to that screen. All right, guys. This was fun. I enjoyed myself with you guys hanging out day after Christmas while sewing. So much fun. I hope some of you beginners um, try a sawtooth star. It's super easy. Like, really, it's super easy. Um, I think this is one of the easiest blocks there is. And when it, well, besides like a just plain easy, like spore patch or something, when it comes to Finally, starting with flying geese, this is the easiest one there is. Crypto lady says, love your sewing space. Oh, awesome. It's super just messy. My mom just, uh, my mom and me came in here today to give my mom some fabric, and we had a whirlwind of a mess yeah, happen. And everything all it, you guys computer. can't even see. There is, like, pulling all the baskets of scraps out so that she could dig for scraps. Yeah, she needed some scraps because she got a new sewing machine. She bought a brother, I think it's called a PQ 1500. It's my Juki or the Janome. It's that, but a brother's version. So um, she bought that and she has been just crazy, making crazy quilt crumb blocks, if that makes any sense, crumb block pieces, just to get used to the machine and the fastness of it because her old machine is a brother machine, which is like this one so 
yeah, she definitely upgraded going fast. It's probably got that same feeling that Becca has with the brand new machine going zoom, zoom, zoom. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, so I gave her some scraps, not just some. I gave her like four, no, three bags and a box full. <laughs> full. <laughs> and I still have tons, so. But I shared the love, so she'll be able to sew for a while and not have to buy anything and be able to make some projects, which would be good, you know. I encourage it for all beginner quilters. And she's not going to just quilt. She likes making bags, too. So she'll have that. And I gave her some zippers so she can do that. All right. The other thing, this was it. I'll sew some of these. So maybe by the next time you guys see me, this will be finished. This is just me working on side, although I did want to teach you a sawtooth star. so. Since I pulled out the scraps. And now you guys know how to make a sawtooth star. Super simple, not very hard. Yep. Then you can make it all one color back here. So all this, it could be a two color block. All this can be just one solid color from all these pieces. And this could be one solid color with the star points. I mean, you don't have to go elaborate like me and put a different color in every section of the block. So, <laughs> yeah, she definitely upgraded from a geo. <laughs> yep she didn't bring it with her she plans to come again she's going to bring her um what she would call her now mercedes and she's going to come and maybe while she's here that next time you guys can have some sew along with me and my mom so all right i'm gonna go i need to eat i need to relax and i'm like totally talking for no reason now <laughs> <laughs> all right i love you guys thank you for hanging out with me don't forget if you're new to my channel somewhere down this way i think it's that way now it yeah because i'm not used to it, the camera being this way down there is a subscribe button hit that ring the bell because you'll get notifications when i go live i am live every sunday at 5 p.m um which is arizona time mountain standard time and uh the rest of my lives and uploads are random except for wednesdays is a 25 patch block so until next time, guys, I'll see you. Bye. Happy New Year. Oh, and Happy New Year if I don't see you before then. But I'll be on Becca's on New Year's Eve. Don't forget, guys, so Becca's channel. Subscribe to her. I'll be there New Year's Eve. Good night.